Hello, you're watching PC Jack. Today is a very good day because after a year of waiting, my Steam Deck has finally arrived. While I'm really excited to get my hands on with the Steam Deck, I thought today would be a good chance for me to show you guys the actual unboxing experience as well as the initial first time setup for the Steam Deck. And hopefully, if all goes well, maybe we can even get some games running before the end of the video. So I can't wait any longer, let's just get this bad boy open. Okay, so before we actually open up the box, it's nice to see that Valve have actually gone ahead with a bit more of a plain package look on the box, because I have seen a couple of issues abroad where there are a lot of Steam Decks getting stolen because the, uh, the packaging isn't very uh, conspicuous. But as you can see on this, there's literally nothing really unique about it, it's just a generic box, which is really good to see in case people were concerned. But then once you open up the box, as you can see, we're presented with a couple of uh, places you can actually play your Steam Deck. You're on the patio, on the couch, in a test chamber, on the subway, on a ferris wheel. Good to know I suppose anyway. So immediately presented with these instructions. So plug in, power on, anything on the back. Okay, and then it's just got a couple of uh, extra details on there then, okay. Right, what else have we got? There's a little box in here. And this has... Aha, so this is where we've got our charger. So this is our charger. I can take a closer look at that after to see what kind of length we're working with on there, that's fine. Okay, now on to the main event. Oh, plastic wrap on there, so if we can get that undone. Take that out of there. Okay, your games are going places. That is interesting to see. So I've gone for the 256 gigabyte model of the Steam Deck, just in case you're wondering. Okay, first off, I've got to say, this actual case feels really rock solid. There's not much given it at all, so I reckon if you did actually drop this, you wouldn't have any issues. And then of course you've got this little pouch for here, which you can use for storing stuff, like maybe a charger or stuff like that. Pretty cool. Got a handle, and oh, so it also got a little tag for that. Okay, we can get that undone. That's better. Okay, now the part we've all been waiting for. Oh yeah, that is cool. So let's take it out and get a bit of a hands-on with this. Oh wow. I'm going to have to apologise because there is going to be a bit of a reflection. As you can see, I've made sure to uh, have the light off because it might be a bit too much glare. But you might see my uh, my mug at certain points. But first off, that feels really good in hand. And the way that it grips, like you can grip it with your hand, feels really nice. Let me take a look on the back. So you can see how it's like sort of contoured to actually fit the grip of your hand anyway. And then um, obviously we've got these additional buttons. I'm not quite sure how I would integrate these into my gaming. But interesting nonetheless. Before we boot up, let's do a little size comparison just to see. So I've got my Nintendo Switch for here. That definitely seems pretty big in comparison. So if you have that like edge to edge, it's almost like an extra two inches of space on the other side. So that's pretty interesting to see. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do now is just uh, get this plugged in and uh, we'll see how we're looking. Okay, I was actually going to show you guys the first boot up, but it actually turned on as soon as I switched on the power for the charger. So. This has been the first screen we've been greeted by, which is just the language setting. So um, we can just go for this. And then we need to find UK time. Let's have a look. Where is the time for the UK? I didn't think this would be the most challenging part of this initial setup. Okay, finally now. That took me a lot longer than I thought it would. I was just being an idiot. Couldn't find the UK time, but that's sorted. And then I have to connect to my Wi-Fi. So I won't show you this part. Okay, so we're connected to the Wi-Fi now. Let's carry on. Okay, so it's just going to go through and install some updates, I'm guessing. So we'll just... We can wait a couple of minutes for that to do its thing. Okay, so it's nearly finished doing the initial update. I think most of it probably took longer than it should have because the Wi-Fi in my office absolutely sucks. But it's nearly done now, so once the update is finished, we'll jump in and take a look at what comes next. Okay, so it's actually been about another five minutes or so. I think I had to actually download something else after that initial download. And again, because my internet sucks, it's taken a bit longer than I would like. But I think we're nearly at the end now, so fingers crossed. Okay, so the actual update is now finished. For some reason, it was getting stuck on one second remaining, so I actually had to reset the device, and then it actually finished the update. And after that, it just asked me to sign into my Steam account, and we were greeted by this, the actual game mode for the Steam Deck. And as you see, we can scroll through and take a look at some of the games that I've got on here. And what I decided to do, I actually got a couple of games pre-installed for us, so that we can take a little quick look to see how things are looking. And the way I did that, I actually had to transfer them from an external hard drive, and do that within the actual desktop mode. So, to get to the desktop mode, we can click on the Steam button, and then go all the way down to Power, and then go Switch to Desktop, and give it a couple of seconds. 
Ah, boom, we're in the desktop mode. So uh, once you're in here, it functions pretty much as you would expect for a desktop. You can use the trackpad to actually like move the mouse and whatnot. And uh, I won't be going into too much detail on desktop quite yet, but uh, this is how I actually got some games pre-installed by transferring them across. But let's go back to game mode for a second. So I'm thinking what we'll do, we'll just quickly jump into a few games and see how things are looking, and uh, particularly from there. Okay, so we're in Resident Evil 7, and as you see, we're currently running at 1280 by 860Hz for our refresh rate, and I've basically got everything maxed out. The only thing I've made sure to do is actually enable uh, FSR for ultra quality, just to give us a bit of an extra boost to our performance. And we can actually monitor our performance by clicking this uh, button with the three dots, and we can go to our performance overlay, and we get different levels, so for one, just get a frame counter, and then we get some information on our GPU, CPU, and then we can get some additional info like our temperatures and a frame time graph, and we can get even more details from there. So I quite like just going with this one for now, but we'll keep that on just to keep an eye on things. Okay, so we're currently in Resident Evil 7, and as you can see, we're currently maxed out at 60 FPS, and it's pretty smooth. There are times where it will drop a little bit, but overall, it tends to stick pretty close to that 60 FPS count. Um, as you can see, our temperatures aren't too bad at the moment, like our CPU is currently just around in the 70s. Uh, it tends to stay around in the high 60s most of the time, but uh, it's pretty much the same for the GPU as well. And uh, let's see if we can get to something a bit more uh, interesting on screen, just to take a bit more of a closer look. And uh, I gotta say, it does look really just... I know we're on a smaller screen, so we could even get away with lower settings, but the fact that we're managing to maintain 60 FPS on high I don't see any reason to actually drop them down. So I definitely say that uh, Resident Evil 7 doesn't seem to have much of an issue running on this. So uh, take a look at something that's a bit more challenging to actually get set up and running. So a game I've been really excited to play on the Steam Deck is actually a bit of a classic Prince of Persia Warrior Bin. And this is one that isn't actually verified on the deck. Uh, it can run, but there are a couple of things that we need to bear in mind. So this is one of the things. I actually need to be able to select that bit that says launch game, but by default, it doesn't let you do that using the D-pad or that. I have to actually use the uh, joystick as like a mouse, which is a bit challenging. There may be a better way to do this, but this is the only way I found to do it. Like that, and you have to press X, and then it works. And I need to get the mouse again, and boom, we're into the game. Like I said, there are going to be a couple of times where some games are a bit funny about running on the deck, but little tricks like that should help. Here we go, we're in the game now, and uh, once I'm in, it runs absolutely perfectly as if I'm using just a, ge a generic gamepad. Uh, one of the things I did actually have to change though is I had to access the INI file for the game to actually input the resolution for 1280 by 800. But like you see, once it's uh, inputted on there, it looks absolutely perfect. Once you get it set up as it should be, the game runs absolutely perfectly. And for a game that's nearly 18 years old, I'm loving being able to play this on uh, such an awesome little handheld. So, I have to say so far, I am really impressed with this. Like I said, there was a bit of an issue with the initial first update, but once I reset the device, it did actually complete the update and let me use the Steam Deck. Now, I know from what I've covered in this video, it is pretty brief, but it is going to take me a bit of time to get fully acclimated with how the Steam Deck runs, and all the little things I need to tweak and figure out just to get the Steam Deck to exactly where I want it to be. But I really thought it'd be fun to actually show you guys my first impressions and the actual unboxing and first setup. I will be working on a full length dedicated review of the Steam Deck, so that will be coming in the next couple of weeks. So if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe for that when it comes out. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. If you'd like to talk more with myself and other like-minded hardware enthusiasts, then make sure to check out the PCJack Discord. You'll find links to all those in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I've got things to do.